awesome. Off to a good start. We're talking about Mouse. So enthusiastic for such a depressing novel. So today we're talking about Mouse by Art Spiegelman for my first book review. Yay! I have the two volume version. When I went to the store, they didn't have the just single book of it. So I have two. Mouse is a graphic novel and it is a nonfiction novel. It is a true story about R. Spiegelman's father and his story of survival. So although the novel is about Vladek and his story, there's actually two narratives going on. There is the narrative of Arch Spiegelman and how he wrote Mouse and the process of writing Mouse and those interviews that he had with his father. It's really interesting to see those two narratives interact with one another. Everything in Mouse is incredibly thought out. The way the panels are laid out, the shape of the panels, the sizes, the words are, I believe, handwritten. He knows exactly how to draw your eye to a certain image that he wants it to be drawn to, and he knows what he wants you to think while reading it. So there's actually a page it's not necessarily a spoiler, but I do want to show how the two narratives interact with each other. Hopefully y'all can see it, I honestly have no idea. So in these panels, on this page, you have a German soldier telling uh, Vladek and the other soldiers that he's with to clean a stable in like an hour or something, which is impossible according to Vladek. Then in the next half of the page, you have Artie sitting and listening intently to his father's story, but you're pulled out of that story and you're pulled into these panels because Artie drops some of his cigarette ash onto the carpet and Vladek interrupts himself. He goes, and somehow we did make the job in only an hour and a half, but look what you do, Artie. And Artie goes, huh? <laughs> it's funny because I think that we get a similar effect of like, what? What did he do? You were in the middle of telling this intense story and then it's interrupted. And it's really fun the way that he does this because it's how an actual story would be told. If you're sitting there listening to somebody and then something happens in real life, it gets interrupted and it's really cool to see how he made that happen. So while Mouse is a Holocaust narrative and there is this narrative going on of Artie writing Mouse. It's also a story of this father and son attempting to bond. They really don't understand each other and it's really difficult for Artie because the Holocaust has always been a part of his life, not directly but indirectly through his parents. His mother was a Holocaust survivor as well. The story of the Holocaust overshadows all other stories and that can be a problem for a child. You know, any problems that he might have aren't really perceived as problems. In the very beginning of Mouse 1, I mean, the very first page is Artie as a child, and he's having problems with his friends. He breaks a skate, and his friends leave him and, like, call him a rotten egg or something. And he goes to his dad for support, and his dad is like, friends? Glad it goes, friends? Your friends? If you lock them together in a room with no food for a week, then you could see what it is, friends. As a child, you know, that's hard. He has these problems that are important to him, and they'll never be as important as the Holocaust. And that's the same with accomplishments. There's a part where Artie is talking to his therapist and talking about how any accomplishment that he's ever had has never been as great as his father's surviving the Holocaust. Like, that is the ultimate accomplishment. There's also a discussion of how much luck plays into surviving. His therapist is actually also a Holocaust survivor, and they have a discussion about how it's random. Random people survive. They weren't always good people. They weren't always people that were witty and smart and, and found a way to survive. It was just, it just happened. But Vladek was definitely a man of all trades. He knew a lot of skills that helped him get through, but luck did play a big part in his survival as well. So back to that father-son bonding thing that I was talking about. I think Mouse is already trying to understand his father's past and trying to understand how that past ties in with his own life. It's been an element of confusion his entire life. And through these interviews with his father, he's spending a lot of quality time with him and asking a lot of questions and figuring out the reasons behind a lot of quirky habits that Vladek has. Like he hoards a lot of junk and he doesn't like to waste anything. He doesn't like to waste food or waste money. And even though the characters are drawn as animals, it doesn't really take away how traumatic the experience was of 
the Holocaust. The images that Spiegelman draws are just sad. There are some panels where he talks about how guilty he feels about telling the story of these people who aren't alive to hear it, and he pairs his guilt with these images that are haunting. And Spiegelman is aware that he is exploiting the suffering of people, and that's a really big cause of guilt for him, and he addresses it in Maus. He debated on whether he should even write the second volume. You know, the second one came out in 1991, and the first one came out in 1986. There was a lot of time for him to think about, you know, what he was doing, and even though Maus was an attempt for him to connect with his father and tell his father's story, he also feels guilty by telling it through a comet, you know, like it's not good enough. I mean, it's amazing, and I think that it reaches a new audience of people, people that wouldn't have read just a regular book of, of this survival story, but bringing it through a graphic novel, bringing it through a comic, it opens up a whole new possibility for people to read it. And it should not not be taken seriously because it's a comic. It's just a different medium, but it's wonderful and it does, I think, what it's supposed to do. I had heard of Mouse years ago before I had to read it for school, but I never got around to it. I'm glad that I was put in a position where I got to read it and it was part of school. It's just like an added bonus. It's like something I get a, something I wanted to read in school. <laughs> like, okay. So this is a really short review. I'm figuring out how I want to do these reviews. I'm new to YouTube, I'm new to making videos in general. I've never really been a videoer. Videoer. Good vocabulary, Bod. Thanks. I know. You don't even have to tell me. Bailey! So, my next video I think will be the weekly vlog. I also went to the dollar store, I went to Dollar Tree, and picked up two books. It's an Aardvark Eat Turtle World by Paula Danzinger and Panic in a Suitcase by Yelena Akatiarskaya. Yep. These two will be the start of the dollar store book reviews. There, it was actually a mess. There's a video of it in my weekly vlog, so check that out when it comes out later. If I miss something important, I'm sorry. This was real quick. First book review ever. So if you've read Mouse, tell me what you thought about it in the comments below. And if you haven't read Mouse, tell me if you're interested in reading it, if it sounds good, if it sounds like something you'd be interested in. You should probably read it anyways because it's phenomenal. Give me a like if you'd like to, I would appreciate it. Sorry if this wasn't the best review. Maybe in the future I'll re-review Mouse. And note, Mouse was awesome. Bye. <coughs> that was gross. Excuse me. Oh my god. I can't stop. I'm sorry.